Just a page, song number 756. I'm going to ask you to stand as we sing. Mine eyes have seen the glory. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible sweet sword. seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have built him an altar in the evening dews and damps. Read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat, sifting out the hearts of men before the judgment seat. Be swift, my soul, to answer him, be jubilant, my feet, for God is. Oh 
across the sea with a glory in his bosom he transfigures you and me he died to make men holy let us live to make men free while god is marching on glory glory hallelujah that truth that his truth is still marching on just turn back a page song number 750 or 754 god of the ages i'm thankful that the same god that that the, the very beginning of the bible says in the beginning god created that same god the same god that was with moses when the children of israel were in the wilderness that same god is the same god that uh it, that 250 years ago was with our founding fathers and, and that our nation was built upon. And that same God is still true. It's the same God that is God today that we serve. I'm thankful for that. Song number 754.
Thank you for that beautiful singing. Thank you, Brother Luke, for those very fitting and appropriate songs. And what a great opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer today. We are so grateful for his blessings. And one of the blessings that if we are not careful, we take for granted is the freedom that we have as United States citizens. We have a lot of freedom. And uh, as someone who says, freedom is not free. It came with a price. And I trust that we have a renewed recognition. Today, if no other, within the next couple of days, as we celebrate the birthday of our nation, that we have a renewed appreciation and a renewed recognition of the freedoms that we have and we better we better cling to and we better be willing in certain cases to fight for so that we don't lose them because freedom is not free. And so as we prepare our hearts for prayer today, I do want to encourage you to pray for our nation. Uh, we have come through nearly 250 years of existence as a nation. There have been great times. There have been... Uh, not so great times. There have been times where God was truly focused upon. There have been times, and we have seen even in recent years, efforts made to tear down a focus upon God and the Bible. And so we need to pray for our nation. I uh, also um, want to remind you that the first Sunday of every month we have designated as our Missionary Sunday. And so we do want to just at least mention some of those that we support as missionaries. We want to continue to pray for the Andrew Street family that ministers in the country of India. We want to uh, pray for Julia Bang, who ministers specifically to the hearing impaired, and she does that among many nations. And honestly, right at the moment, I'm not sure where she is, but I know that she's working for the Lord wherever she is. So let's pray for her, and then we pray for the Durhams. Uh, they are ministering over in Asia, and we want to continue to pray for them and for their safety with everything that is happening over in Ukraine. And we pray for Stephen Jenny Gardner, who minister right here in the state of Indiana to those that have serious addictions. In uh, Frankfort, Indiana, they have a, a ministry there, and so let's Pray for Steve and Jenny Gardner. We do have somewhat of a lengthy list today. I just want to go through briefly. I know that God is not overwhelmed and they are important. And we have several physical needs. Uh, we're missing Carol McClellan today. She is not feeling well and uh, may in fact uh, need to go to uh, a clinic or something today. Brother Dave is endeavoring to seek the Lord's direction on that. She hasn't been real well the last few hours, so let's pray for her. Let's also pray for Linda McGill. She is in the hospital. She was at Winchester, and I received information a few, uh, well, before the service today that she was being transferred to Anderson, so let's pray for her. Uh, also, we've been praying for Bill Ames. He has been through so much and just had another uh, surgery on uh, Friday, and uh, he texted me this morning that he's dealing with bacterial infection, and so we need to keep praying for him. It just seems like he goes from one crisis to another. I did have a good visit with him in his home on uh, Wednesday, and uh, let's just pray the Lord will continue to help him. He's, he's sure doing his best to keep praising the Lord in the midst of it, but you know, when you go through so much difficulty physically, it does affect you emotionally, and so let's pray for him. Um, let's pray for Betty Tolbert. She had knee, replace, knee replacement surgery uh, this past week on Wednesday, and she had some minor issues with medicine afterwards, but I am thankful that she is home, and I think she's doing better, but let's keep her in our prayers. We did receive a good update from Ruth Ann earlier for her son-in-law, David Hayes. Let's continue to pray for him. And um, then we're missing Esther Connor today, too. She's not feeling well. And so let's pray for her, that uh, the Lord will give her a touch and help her. And I want to encourage you to, even now, 
begin praying for our upcoming family camp that starts July the 22nd and goes over the last two Sundays of July and and that's always a special time every year. Brother Dave made reference to the, the benefits of going to camp meeting and one of them is being immersed in the presence of God. It's a great opportunity and you might say, oh, but I, it's just not quite as comfortable as it is sitting here in these padded pews with air conditioning. And I'll have to agree with you. It's not quite as comfortable. But you know what? When the presence of the Lord comes, you kind of forget about those things. And uh, I'm amazed that people are willing to go out where it's less than comfortable on the Muncie Reservoir. I saw a lot of people out there. And there's gnats out there. Did you know that? There's gnats at the reservoir. And people still go. And uh, there's humidity out there and there's heat. People still go and they sit around campfires when there's gnats out there. It's amazing. But, uh, you know, camp meeting is amazing too. And so be thinking about praying for our upcoming camp meeting July the 22nd. I'm sure that many of you are aware of the loss, the sudden and tragic loss this week of Diana Covert. And uh, we want to pray for that family, pray for the extended family, and of course specifically for her husband Wayne. Um, I believe uh, they have been married 49 years, if I'm thinking straight on that. And uh, we just need to really lift him up. She is enjoying the bliss and the glory of heaven. And uh, I'm sure she made a beeline to her son Jonathan and was happy to be reunited with him, but we miss her, and she's going to be greatly missed at camp meeting. She, she filled so many roles at camp meeting, and so let's pray for that dear family. It was a, a very unexpected, tragic loss this week, Friday morning around 11, and uh, I will go ahead and mention that the arrangements are there's going to be a viewing at Sparrow Creek Friends Church Tuesday evening, four to eight and the funeral is going to be there also at 11 on Wednesday morning so let's pray for the family let's pray for Sparrow Creek Church this is a great loss to them as well and uh, let's pray that God will be near and help also certainly continuing to pray for the family of Kate who passed away recently Mark and Tammy and their family also praying for the family of Rachel Schwartz and that would be Charlie's first cousin uh, daughter of Steve Stalker David's brother and so let's uh, let's pray for these families uh, thankfully in uh, in every case these individuals were ready to go and uh, prepared for heaven and you know as you've heard me say many times and I'll say it again life at its best is uncertain we need to be ready at all times. And so let's remember these. I know that's a, a kind of a long list today, but I felt like every one of them were important to mention. And uh, so let's uh, do our best to remember those as we join our thoughts and our prayers together. Pray for this service. We need God's help afresh and anew right here today. And uh, I'm sure you may have unspoken requests. You'd like to lift your hand. God sees all of those all across the congregation. If you're physically able, join me in standing as we look to the Lord for prayer today and feel free to join right in as we talk to the Lord from our hearts and are very assured of His listening ear. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the great opportunity that we have to be gathered together in this place of worship. We do want to thank you for the freedoms that we as United States citizens continue to enjoy. We, we do thank you for what uh, this weekend represents. Yet as we look back historically, we know that it did not represent fun and games. We know that freedom was not handed out on a silver platter. We know that lives were given. We know that blood was spilt. And Lord, we just want to thank you for the freedoms that we continue to enjoy and pray for our nation in a time when there seems to be such serious division across the nation, we pray that there would be a genuine spiritual awakening, a revival 
of uh, recognition of the value of the principles that this nation was built upon. As uh, one verse of scripture says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And that's what we as a nation were founded upon. And we know there has been much effort to erode and destroy and cause to crumble that foundation. But Lord, we know that you will not crumble, but may we uh, do our part to see that those principles are upheld. We do want to pray, Lord, in behalf of uh, uh, our missionaries, those that we choose to support financially and also with prayer. And we pray, Lord, for the Andrew Street family as they are involved in ministry in India. You know all of the various uh, uh, difficulties that they face and challenges that they face of being faithful to minister for your cause. We pray for Julia Bang as she continues to expend her energies in reaching out to those that are hearing impaired and ministering to them. We pray for Ed and Heather Durham as they uh, have recently uh, gone back to Asia and they're in their ministry there. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them and help them and protect them. We pray for Steve and Jenny Gardner as they are so greatly involved in ministering to those that have uh, various addictions. Help them, Lord, and give them fruit for their labor. We know that you have blessed them with those that have uh, been converted and their lives transformed, but we know they have also experienced heartache and they have seen some go back and even some that have died as a result of overdose. And Lord, we just pray that you would give them strength and help. And then our heart goes out to many of these that have physical needs. We think about Linda McGill today and ask that you would be with her there in the hospital. We pray for Carol McClellan that you would be with her and uh, give wisdom as they endeavor to determine what steps uh, they should take. We pray for Esther today. We miss her in our midst and pray that you would give her a touch. We pray also for Bill Ames, Lord. We don't have to explain to you everything that he has faced, but Lord, we know that he has been through so much for the last several months. And Lord, just be near to him and help him and strengthen him. Thank you for his faith. Thank you for his focus. Uh, and in the midst of it, Lord, we know he has faced many discouragements, but continue to strengthen and help him, we pray. We also pray for Betty Tolbert. Thank you for giving uh, them success in the surgery, but continue to help her to be brought to complete recovery. We thank you for the good report we got uh, regarding David Hayes. And thank you for the work that you have been doing there. And we pray also uh, for Bob Journey. And thank you that he is continuing to improve. But we just ask you to give him the strength that he needs to continue to face what is up ahead. And Lord, you know about our upcoming uh, camp meeting. While we do enjoy the times of uh, fellowship with fellow brothers and sisters, that's not our main purpose in being there and, and expending all that goes into having camp meeting, but Lord, we want to be immersed in your presence, and we pray for those that will be ministering to us, Dr. Michael Williams and, and the Cooley family as they'll be singing, and those that will be ministering to the children and the young people, we pray your help and anointing upon them. We also certainly, Lord, look, uh, look into our hearts as we think about those that have experienced loss very recently. We pray for the family of Diana Covert that just so suddenly and unexpectedly lost her on Friday morning. We pray that you would be with them today and especially with Wayne, her husband. We pray that you would be with the family of Rachel Schwarz. We know that she uh, suffered intensely for the last couple of years and we just pray that you would be with that dear family. We also pray for the family of Kate Pegg, Lord, and thank you for the comfort that we have in knowing where she is today. Again, Lord, we ask for your help and your presence in this service today. We thank you for every person that is here. We thank you for everyone that has, has uh, taken the time to endeavor and to plan to intentionally be here today. 
Lord, there are some that we miss, and we pray that you would be with them. And, and uh, those that uh, are struggling spiritually, we pray that you would speak to their hearts and you would draw upon them. We know, Lord, that you are interested in every one of us. Your word tells us that you are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And Lord, on this day that is a part of a holiday weekend, we pray that you would help us to focus upon you and the freedoms that you provide for those that choose to follow you. Freedom from sin, freedom from the carnal mind, freedom from uh, the aspects that, uh, that are the consequences of choosing to walk against you and contrary to you. Thank you for all of those freedoms that you provide and just help us in this service today to be responsive to your voice. In your precious name we pray in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time. We have a special number in song by a trio. Uh, Luke and Jelena Dotson and Jesse Edwards are coming to minister for us at this time. Oh, the cross is 
is my statue of liberty. It was there that my soul was set free. Unashamed I'll proclaim that a rugged cross is my statue of liberty. Praise the Lord. Before the children leave today, I want us to stand together and I want us to pledge allegiance to our American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated, and at this time we will allow the children ages 12 and under to go to their time of Bible study if they so desire. Before we look into the scriptures today, I want to share with you, we have been praying for our young people as they were actively involved in ministry to others last week not this past but the previous week they arrived home late Monday night of this past week and we are thankful for protection to them in their travels but uh, there was some communication from uh, the individuals that they were ministering to out there that I thought I would share. Some of you may have seen it on Facebook, and that's fine if you did, but I am certain many did not. And so uh, this was actually uh, written a little over a week ago, and then there's another one I'll read that was written after that. But this comes from Ranch Haven, where our youth were ministering and assisting for a week, and this is what they said. Isn't it amazing how God sends just the right people at just the right time to help you just the way you're needing it? This wonderful group of young people and young adults hails from the Randolph Friends Church in Indiana. They arrived late Monday night and have been hard at work sanding, priming, and painting pews clearing out the old stables area, prepping it to be turned into more rooms, sealing the concrete in the tabernacle, and finishing up the hunting blind. They even had a service at church tonight, so this would have been written Wednesday a, a week ago, a little over a week ago. And the Lord blessed us greatly by coming to meet with us in a special way. We are so grateful for their wonderful work ethic. Imagine that, parents. Those young people had work ethic. Think about that. Uh, we're so grateful for that, their varied skill sets and their servants' hearts, and we've made some great new friends too. What a privilege to follow Jesus. And then they wrote later, here are the finished projects from the week. A huge thank you to Randolph Friends Church Youth Group and staff. They are just a tremendous group of people, and it was a privilege and a blessing to host them. The tabernacle floor was cleaned, sealed twice, and waxed twice. The old stables were cleaned out and prepped, walls torn down, nails pulled, yes, manure removed, 
dirt leveled. The pews were sanded, primed, painted twice, and cleaned. The hunting blind was completed. Windows and doors set put in, outside metal put on, etc. The tabernacle was even set back up this morning. That would have been Saturday morning a week ago before the crew pulled out. It was a wonderful week. So great to see young people with hearts that are excited to work for the master. So I just wanted to share that, that our kids didn't go out there for mere vacation or mere fun and games and uh, just to have a big time. They really did some serious work in ministry and you can see from what was shared how much it meant. So I just wanted you to know that. There are sometimes it's appropriate to brag on people, and this is one time, one among many, but uh, I wanted to do that today. I want to now draw your attention to the Scripture, the words of Jesus found in John chapter 12. We're going to read verse 31, 32, and 33. I know you were standing mere moments ago, but those of you with enough energy remaining, would you please stand once again in honor of the reading of God's word for these three verses of Scripture. John chapter 12, verse 31, 32, and 33. The words of Jesus, beginning with verse 31, he said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning. We thank you for this passage of Scripture, and we thank you for what it represents to us. And we thank you for what this flag standing by our side also represents. I pray, Lord, that as we endeavor to share what you have laid on our heart, that you would make it effective and meaningful. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. It was on July the 3rd, 2016 just happened to be July the 3rd that year that we were gathered here together and I shared with you the story that I'm going to share today six years ago but I felt uh, clearly directed of the Lord that I should share this and as I do I am, I am certain that you will recognize that it definitely bears repeating. For you see so many times as I have already just sort of mentioned in passing today, it is very easy for us to take for granted the freedoms, the privileges, and what this flag represents to us. It was decided many years ago to name as our national anthem the song that we are familiar with that is referred to as the Battle Hymn of the Republic, or the Star-Spangled Banner. And uh, it is very natural for us and just sort of certainly appropriate for us when we hear it played or sung to stand to our feet. But I wonder, I wonder how many of us recognize when in, what went into the writing of that song. The Star-Spangled Banner was a song that was authored not by a songwriter, but by a lawyer. His name, Francis Scott Key. It was during the War of 1812, and the great fight had been going on between the British forces and the newly formed American government. The tensions of the war had increased and casualties had begun mounting up. Prisoners were being taken, prisoners taken by the British, prisoners taken by the American military. And it was a very difficult time, a time of great tension. 
And it was during this time that as the casualties had begun mounting up and as prisoners were increasing that were being taken, that Francis Scott Key, who had a friend that had been taken as a prisoner and who was aware that there were many other prisoners held captive by the British on a large ship that was anchored just outside Baltimore, Maryland, near Fort McHenry. Francis Scott Key went to the newly formed American government and asked for permission and for appropriate legal documentation to go to that ship to endeavor to speak with the admiral of His Majesty's fleet at that time, to endeavor to arrange for the release of some of those prisoners that were on that ship. The newly formed American government was willing, after speaking with Francis Scott Key, a lawyer, an attorney, they were willing to offer an exchange. They were willing to offer the exchange of one British prisoner for every one American prisoner that was held hostage on that ship. How happy Francis Scott Key was with the possibility having documentation with him. He made his way across the waters there over to that ship that was anchored there near Baltimore, Maryland. He was granted access to the deck of that great ship and very quickly after ascending onto that deck, he spoke to, he asked for permission to speak to and was granted permission to speak to uh, his majesty's admiral, the admiral of his majesty's fleet. And as he spoke to him, he very quickly shared with him the concept, the principle that he was there to offer and that he had the backing, he had documentation, the backing of the newly formed American government offering to exchange one for one. British prisoner for American prisoner. It seemed like a long, long wait as the admiral, as some of his, his men gathered together and they conversed and they talked and they debated. And then finally it was like music to Francis Scott Key's ears when the admiral said, I believe, yes, I believe something can be worked out. Oh, he was so excited. He was so happy. And then suddenly it dawned on him, the prisoners, wherever they were, they had no idea that freedom was being worked out in their behalf. And so he looked to the admiral and he said, could I, could I have the privilege, could I be granted the privilege of being the one to share with them the good news? Well, the admiral was a bit cynical, but he said, well, I suppose that would be fine. And he took him over to a place where he was let down into the bowels of that great ship. At first, upon descending, of course, it was very dim. It was dark. It was hard to see. And his eyes gradually became accustomed to his surroundings. And then suddenly, he became so startled and shocked as he took in the sight of those that were held prisoner. He saw all around the perimeter of that great ship many, many young American boys that had been taken as prisoners. Some of them had arms missing. Some of them had legs or feet missing that had been the result of the last battle they had fought in. They were chained every third one around the perimeter of that ship. And he was so startled, he hardly knew what to say for a moment. And then he gathered his emotions together and he said, gentlemen, I have good news for you. He said, I have with me documentation. I have spoken to the admiral and I have asked for, and it looks like that arrangements are being made for your release. We are offering an exchange. And he was so excited to share with them and suddenly they asked him a question 
stymied him in his tracks. They said, do you mean, do you mean that we're going to be able to fight again for our country? Francis Scott Key was taken aback. He said, oh, fellas, he said, we're just wanting to bring you home and make heroes out of you. We're not even asking you to fight again. You have already given so much. It's very obvious. It's very evident. We're not asking you to fight. We want to bring you home and, and uh, make heroes out of you. They said, oh, oh, but Mr. Key, you do not understand. The battle is not over. Until the cause is won. I want you to think about that for a moment. As I said earlier, freedom isn't free. Freedom comes with a price. Here are men that had given so much already and they said the battle's not over until the cause is won. How quick is it for us to often give up on the brink of a miracle before we see the fulfillment of that which is the desired end. As Francis Scott Key stood there, he could hardly fathom their thinking. And then he ascended back up on deck and as he did, he noticed very quickly that the demeanor of the admiral had changed. As a matter of fact, he walked over to Francis Scott Key, and he said, you know, sir, he said, I am not sure whether it really matters whether those men are released or not. Francis Scott Key said, what do you mean? As, as the admiral of His Majesty's fleet, certainly, surely, you would not go back on your word. You promised me. I just shared. He said, oh, I'm not breaking my word. I just said, I don't think it really is going to matter. He said, what do you mean? He said, come with me. He took him over to the port side of that ship and he said, I want you to look out there and I want you, I want you to tell me what you see. So he looked over the port side of the ship and he looked out in the direction the admiral was pointing. He said, well, that's, that's Fort McHenry. That's Baltimore, Maryland. He said, what else do you see? What else do you see out there waving in the breeze. He said, oh, the stars and the stripes. That's our flag. He just kind of grunted and nodded and he said, now come with me to the other side, the starboard side of the ship. And he said, I want you to look out there and I want you to tell me what you see. At first, all he could see was horizon and water. He said, I'm not sure what you mean. He said, look again, look right where the sky meets the water. He said, what do you see? He looked, he squinted, he peered, and he said, oh, I, I see some little tiny specks out there. He said, yes, only those are not specks. Those are ships. He said, our government has just issued an ultimatum to your government that if that flag that you see over there waving in the breezes at Fort McHenry, if that flag does not come down by sunset of tonight, we have been ordered to lower that fort to the face of the earth. Francis Scott Key was appalled. He said, what do you want with that fort? He said, that's a civilian fort. Why, it's not a place with a lot of ammunition and armament. What do you want with that fort? He said, it's not the fort. It's his silly idea of independence. He said, that flag better come down or we're going to lower that fort to the face of the earth. He stood in some stunned silence for a period of time. Suddenly it dawned on him he might as well share the news with the prisoners. He descended back down below deck to where the prisoners were and he shared with them the bleak news that he had just received. And they then again offered words that totally took him by surprise. 
They said, oh, Francis got key somehow, some way. You've got to get a message to our people over there to not take that flag down. He said, but, but do you realize what that means? They said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Those are the colors we followed in our last charge. That's the flag we've buried our brothers in. That flag cannot come down because if that flag comes down, America is down. You've got to get a message. Do not allow that flag to come down. Francis Scott Key says, I can't, they're not even going to release me from the ship right now till the night is over. I can't get any news to them. They said, well, well sir, at least... At least as the, as the time transpires, keep us posted on what is happening. Francis Scott Key went back up on deck. As the hours ticked by, the ships began coming into port. First it was 5, 10, then 20, 30, and he began to lose count of the ships that were coming into bay and then it suddenly hit him that at that present time there was no other nation that had successfully withstood that British fleet. Hope seemed gone. Possibilities of what lay ahead were very, very Everyone re remained almost eerily quiet. The British soldiers on deck. Francis Scott Key was now there on deck. And every eye was trained in the direction of that flag. And then, as the last beams of sunlight sunk beneath the great western horizon, all of a sudden he described what he said was like hell. He said all hell broke loose. It was ram, charge, fire, ram, charge, fire. And everything was aimed in the direction of that fort and that flag. The fighting continued for an hour and ten minutes. And suddenly he heard cries. He heard screams coming from beneath him. He realized it was the prisoners and they were calling out his name. And he went over to the place where he had descended before and, and went down very quickly. They said, you got to tell us what's happening. What's happening? Is the flag still there? He said, I don't know. I can't see. It's so dark. I don't know. They said, go back and look again. And when those bombs burst forth, if you, in the midst of that, sometimes there's like a red glare. If you'll just look Look, you got to tell us if the flag is still there. He went back up on deck. Sure enough, as those bombs would burst forth, when they would hit that fort and hit that ground, there was like a red glare and he could see ever so faintly, yes, 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 it's still there. He went back. He told him it's still there. As of right now, it's still there. Fighting continued well into the night until the men finally fell off into silent exhaustion. It was early the next morning that he was granted leave from the ship and made his way in that little boat that he had come across in quickly across that bay over to Fort McHenry as he expected that fort was riddled to pieces. He said it was as if not even one handful of dirt remained in its original position on that shore. But then he saw a sight that stirred his spirit within him. There still standing, though riddled and torn from the fighting and the barrage of the night before, still standing was that flag. But as he looked upon it, 
he recognized that in the night, during the fighting, there had come a time when that flag had fallen. And when that flag had fallen, there was a patriot whose name we'll never know that had come forth from a place of safety, knowing that it would mean imminent death, who ran and placed himself in such a position as to hold that flag back up to its original position. The fighting had continued as he could see and detect, and it had fallen again. And another patriot, whose name we'll never know, had run from a place of safety, knowing it would mean an imminent death, and had placed his body in such a way as to hold that flag back up until Francis Scott Key said it was like a mass of human cement that held that flag in place. Because remember, if the flag was down, America was down. And the battle's not over until the cause is won. It was then, it was then, standing on a shore that had been riddled by the fighting of the night before, looking at a flag that had been riddled looking at a mass of human cement that held that flag in place. It was then that he wrote the words that we now know so well. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail? the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, Does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free, the home of the brave? Certainly, certainly for any red-blooded American with proper appreciation, that story would stir your heart. But as I stand before you this morning, I think of another hill. I think of another place. Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. You see, it was not a flag, but it was a cross. And on that cross hung the Savior of the world. It wasn't a pretty cross, it was a rugged cross. It wasn't a light cross, it was a heavy cross. It wasn't a beautifully polished cross, it was one that lacked beauty. It was during a time when there was a great fight going on between the forces of heaven and the forces of hell. It seemed as if the casualties had begun mounting up and and mankind was lost in the midst of the consequences of his choice and in the midst of sin. And it was in the midst of that time that one Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Father, chose, chose to go. Just as Francis Scott Key chose to go and knew in so doing he was incurring a risk, so Jesus Christ chose to go, to come. He was not forced. We can read in Paul's writing to the Galatians chapter 1 and verse 4, it tells us who gave himself for our sin. In the book of Titus we also see similar words as it talks about the fact that he gave himself for the redemption of mankind. You see, the fact is, he gave himself. Yes, the casualties had begun mounting up and it looked as if 
that uh, Satan was winning. It looked as if sin was winning, that sin was on the rampant. But it was in the midst of that time that Jesus Christ was lifted up. Yes, he was lifted up. He was pure. He was sinless. But he was the only one that could pay the penalty for man's sins. He was willing to come. He, he wanted to because he thought about the prisoners. He thought about you. He thought about me. The prisoners of sin and Satan. Those that were bound by the chains of sin. Jesus thought about you. He said, yes, I'll go. Yes, I'll go. And through what could appear to be the fighting of that long night, the sun was darkened at noon, at midday. The forces of hell were gleefully proclaiming that they had won because it appeared that he was down. It appeared that he was down. He was taken from the cross and he was placed in a tomb. And it appeared that he was down. But he didn't stay down. He didn't remain in that tomb. He came forth victorious on that third day. Came out of that tomb conquering death hell and the grave carrying in his hand in his grasp the keys of hell setting free the prisoners of sin and of Satan Jesus said and I if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me it is because of what Jesus Christ gave in being lifted up giving his life that we can be set Praise God. Hallelujah. I want us to stand together this morning. I'm going to ask Larie to come to the piano. And I can't think of something better to conclude with on this day that we celebrate the birthday of our nation and freedom. And also recognize the freedom that is offered to us through Jesus Christ. I can't think of anything better to do than to give you opportunity if you are still bound by Sin, if you are still a prisoner of Satan, why not come to this altar and receive deliverance? Receive freedom. Be set free. We want to give you opportunity in the remaining moments of this service to seek God, to come to Him, to allow Him to transform, to allow Him to break the fetters, to break the chain, and to give you absolute freedom. As we wait for just a few moments, I want to give you opportunity to respond to the Lord, the one who gave his life for you. The prophet Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him. It wasn't his sin. It was not his iniquity. It was ours that nailed him there. But he was willing. I shared with you what Paul said to the Galatians. He gave himself. He gave himself willingly. I offer you opportunity to give yourself willingly to him. I wonder as we pause for just a very few moments how many there would be that are here this morning that would just like to step right out and come forward and say, yes, I am going to be set free. Praise God. Praise the Lord. How many want to just step forward and say, yes, I will receive the freedom. I will receive the deliverance. I will be a partaker of what He provides. Praise God. Praise God. Pausing for just a few moments. Amen. He was lifted up. And he, through being lifted up, draws all men unto him. She's playing through again. We're waiting for just a few moments before we change the altar. Order of the service.
What freedom is offered. What deliverance is offered. Those that have experienced it can testify. There's some right here today that have testified even recently or in days past of the transformation and the deliverance that comes through Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Before we change the order this morning as she continues to play very quietly, I wonder if there's just anyone here that would like to respond to the call of the Lord by lifting your hand and asking for prayer. Is there anybody like that this morning? Just say, I, I acknowledge a need and I want you to pray for me. Anybody like that? It's just a first step to getting help. Amen. He is here. He is here. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We're going to have a dismissal prayer and then I want her to change to prepare to play the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem. And I want to conclude with that today after we have prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you once again nearing the end of this service, thanking you for your faithfulness, thanking you for the freedoms, thanking you for the freedoms that we enjoy here in the United States of America. But Lord, we know the freedoms that we have here are nothing to be compared to the freedom that you offer through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the deliverance that we can have that has been worked out and made available through the atonement that was provided for on the cross. Lord, I thank you for what you have given. And may we be eternally grateful for the freedom that you offer. In your precious name, the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.